What I was told to share was to think of it this way. The triune of creation is the father provides the spiritual matter. The mother provides the physical matter. The son of man provides the breath of life that brings the spiritual matter and the physical matter together into life. And so together they create the universe and the life inside of the universe all is everything. I think engaging in these conversations, which I think are super important and necessary can also be very, um, depending on your personal story, can evoke a lot of emotions. And also people also push back on certain things, right? I'm very comfortable with the topic. I'm very comfortable with the subject matter. Um, I hadn't planned on, you know, I just hadn't planned on being public about this part of my life at mm -hmm. this point. Um, this part of my life was definitely going to be extremely public. So, you know, I'm, so I'm going to take this as just uh, an opportunity to walk before I need to run. And um, which is, which is, which is, 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 is wonderful. Mm -hmm. And um, like, it's a very controversial topic in general, right? And it's, so it's a controversial topic in general. And I also have a controversial um well, reflection or opinion, whatever you want, somebody, you know, uh, on the, on the topic itself. Right. And so it's one of those weird things where for me, it just gets weird with people like, well, how do you know that? Right? Well, well, let's, let's, let's get into consciousness. Okay. Like <laughs> until like, depending how far down the path you can go down with me with consciousness it'll determine how, 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 you know, <laughs> much this makes sense or it doesn't. Right. But like the thing that I'm trying to avoid is that I'm not trying to position this as I'm channeling him. Right. Or that I am trying to position that I am speaking for him. Right. What I am saying is, Hey, Based on, my, based on our conversations via consciousness, this is the information that I took away, right? Mm -hmm. up. Like if you were to say, what would he think if you popped up, if he showed up today? We have that conversation all the time. We'd laugh about the shit, right? But it's not done like, it's not done in a, like some people will have, you know, I'll call it astral you know, experiences on the astral plane with people and see, right? Like for me, it's just consciousness where I may, it's not necessarily a real time thing, right? Like I may be trying to figure something out and I may not get the answer back and figure it out for another day or two. You know what I mean? So that's all. So I'm just trying to figure out still myself how to, how to say these kinds of things to say, you know, and, but ultimately like anything, look, people are going to believe what they want to believe, right? My responsibility is not, is not jumping through hoops to try to get people to, 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 to believe that right? that doesn't work, right? People are going to see what they want to see. My responsibility is to answer questions honestly or truthfully for, you know, and um, let the, let, and, you know, let it, kind of go from there and I guess I'm saying that for myself to get me in the right mind space to, more than anything <laughs> I appreciate that background because first of all like when I read through your excerpt the conversation that you shared with me um that you had with Jesus a lot of the stuff that you said wasn't stuff that or it, ha it hasn't been stuff that I haven't heard before from other people who might consider themselves Christian mystics right so nothing popped out to me in terms of like um outside of me thinking oh this is amazing I want to dig deeper a little bit here and kind of talk to you more about your your gifts and and what you consider to be your consciousness connecting mm -hmm. with Jesus because a lot of people will say um that it's important to have a relationship with Jesus. It's important to have a relationship with the Holy Spirit. And they always talk about, yeah, you can go to church, you can do what you need to do, but the real connection comes with taking time to meditate on God's word or Jesus's teachings and seeing how the Holy Spirit or Jesus is speaking through you to you internally, if that makes any sense. So I kind of interpreted some of what you were saying, we're going to get a little bit more like deeper into it. Cause I am going to ask you what you consider consciousness to be. And when you talk about having a conversation with G Jesus, connecting with him through your consciousness, just having you kind of break that down first to kind of set up the rest of the conversation. Um, so I appreciate that background. Again, this is supposed to be a very lighthearted conversation and um a space for you to just 
really speak your truth. That's what I want to hear. And I think the conversation that you had with Jesus, when I read through it, it was very fascinating stuff. And like I said, it's stuff that I've heard before, but I want to particularly talk about your perspective. We're not here to tell people to believe what you're saying or anything like that. We're just engaging in conversation, right? And if people listen to it and it resonates with them, then it resonates with them. If it doesn't, then it does not resonate with them, right? That's just the essence of everything that we're doing. So I appreciate that. And I actually, um, I if, you're... if you don't worry, I'll give you one or two tidbits that hasn't necessarily been talked about. So, mm -hmm. okay, cool. But I want to start off by talking a little bit about you. Um, I know that you spent 21 years in the corporate world and kind of left that behind. And you also talked about being labeled with certain disabilities, quote unquote, by traditional me medicine, such as um, being autistic, um, having ADHD and um, dyslexia. But with all of that, too, you were still um, you played a pivotal role in the finance industry. Um, and then eventually you decided to leave all of that behind and sort of go on, uh, I would call a spiritual journey. You can correct me if I'm wrong. And just kind of diving deeper into some of your more spiritual innate gifts. So I kind of want to talk about that experience first. What made you decide to leave the corporate world behind? Was there a defining moment where you were just kind of like, you know what, I'm I'm done with this. I want to seek out a different path. Um, yeah, so I, it was an interesting thing. So I was pushed out. The universe had said, Hey, look, you're, you're doing, <laughs> you're not good. You're, it's time for you to move on to the next thing. It's not moving fast enough. So we're going to play some assistance here. So, you know, I hadn't felt for a while that it was time for me to move on, but I didn't know why I didn't know what, right. I just knew that things just didn't feel right. What was, and so I was trying to, um, you know, kind of figure that out before I moved on to the next thing. The hardest thing to wrap my mind around was right it was based on what i had understood to be what i was supposed to do in life you know i checked all the boxes right okay you're supposed to be successful as deemed by these economic standards or in these social you know these social standings or the okay d d all right you know supposed to have this title okay right and yet the more you know at the at the at the height of my achievement i was the most miserable and so I'm like, oh, this, the, the, I mean, this, this, this isn't good. This can't be right. Right. Like if I'm checking all the boxes and doing what I'm supposed to be doing, all I'm doing is getting more miserable. Right. Like, I don't understand how this, you know, I don't see a real great future 20, 30, 40 years down the road here, right. <laughs> Based on this trend. And I don't, and so there's gotta be more to this. Anyway, that said, I didn't get there. The universe inter interjected and, you know, I had left corporate because it just, um, I would say it, uh, I was unhappy. It came through, you know, in the work I, you know, and so I had the opportunity to make some changes to either stick around and stay with the organization or leave. And I just, it was my, I just took it as my, it was my time to leave, you know, it was, and so I, but I had no idea at that time that I was going to be embarking on a six year walkabout the way that I did. No, I thought I was just going to go out and, you know, kind of leave this and then go about another corporate life, you know, like you're taught, so to speak, or at least how I was taught. It's interesting that you said that at your highest or like when you reach the highest level in your corporate career, you are your unhappiest. And people, when they think about reaching the top of their career, it's more money, more accolades, more recognition, all the good stuff that we're told that we're supposed to want or we're supposed to reach for but I do think sometimes that when we go down that route which a lot of us find ourselves on because we have to make money and make something out of our lives I do find that a lot of people become um blind or numb to what their true desires are right their true internal guiding light in terms of connecting with the divine or connecting with a higher uh, spiritual path, if that makes any sense. So you said that once you left your corporate career, you thought you were just going to probably fall into like another job and maybe do that for a couple more years, but that didn't happen. So what exactly happened? Yeah. First, I want to go back because you made an interesting point and, 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 you know, it's, it's like you said, we're told that we shouldn't necessarily, like, especially if we're on a, on a spiritual path, we're told that we shouldn't want money or that we shouldn't want these things, right? 
And, you know, I can get into that later, but that's definitely a, uh, um, one of those things that is good in concepts, but, is, but has been manipulated over time, right? And I think even present day, um, I think it's really important that what really needs to have is people, instead of somebody being, being told that money isn't the answer, you know, just be spiritual. No, I think everybody deserves the right to figure that out for themselves. Right. And I'll be the first to tell you that I can tell you that money doesn't matter after a certain point. Right. It's easy to say money doesn't matter once your bills are paid and you got stuff left over and you're very comfortable about it. Right. Whether you have 500, 5,000 or 15,000 doesn't change what you're necessarily your, you know, your next decision is going to be once those basic things are met. Right. And so I think that that's an important aspect that when people talk about that, right. Like, yeah. Um, it was very easy for me to be on a six year walkabout and to say that I money wasn't the driving force because I, I'd made the sacrifices that put me in an economic position to say, okay, I know this isn't the answer, but I was blessed with what I was blessed with. It's now given me the economic you know, ability to not work for a while and to figure this stuff out. Right. And, and, and so I think that that's um, anyway, I just money's not bad and money is not the root. It's like, it's, it's, it's neutral. It's what you do with it. Yeah. I, I appreciate you for kind of highlighting that part as well, because like I said, it's interesting that people, a lot of people who have amassed, you know, a good amount of money for themselves, find themselves feeling like they're missing something or they're not as happy. Um, but to your point too, we still live in a world where money is important and there's a reason why we're told to go to school and why we're told to kind of make something of ourselves so that we can you know, we have to pay our bills. We need a house to stay live in, right? So there's there needs to be balance. And I don't think choosing right. the spiritual path means you're not choosing money or you have to denounce money. And it looks different for everyone, but abundance also includes money. Money is not the root of all evil. It, dep it depends on the person who has it in their hands, right? So I appreciate you for kind of highlighting that and also recognizing that you had gotten to the point where you could walk away from your career for six years and you were in the financial position to do that. So thank you for clarifying that. And as, as I asked before, so on that six year journey, what were some of the things mm -hmm. you discovered about yourself? What path did it lead you down? So I definitely, well, it just led me down a spiritual path in general, right? Eventually um, it started down a path of just, let me just relax, recover, the, the traditional types of things, right? Like, and at that point, my opinion about money was, was, was still like, Hey, like money's not everything, but until something changes in the world, when I feel bummed out and I need to talk to somebody, it costs money to go to a therapist. I want, I want to escape. It costs money to go on a vacation. Right. So to your point, I'm like, okay, I got, I got to be practical about, you know, not because I tend to have a bit of an all or nothing and I go and no, and, and just jump feet first into things. And then I figure out what doesn't work, you know, based on what's not working. And so I said, all right, look, before I just go and denounce all of these things in life that may, you know, really come back to bite me, you know, like having a place to live, things like that. Right. I, I got to, I got to start to, I got a lot more to figure out. Right. And so I really would honestly tell you that I spent the majority of, of my time stopping and starting very unsuccessfully trying to figure out what it was I was supposed to be doing what it was I was supposed to be learning all in the in the corporate world so over the last six years I probably spent the first four years of it doing what I thought I was supposed to be doing as a follow-up then to only realize that you know essentially one of the you know the reason why I needed to leave corporate the reason why I needed just to go through these experiences these struggles etc was for my, it was to be able to have that knowledge for really what my real purpose was, which was this next chapter of life, right? And so then that that took me down, a, you know, a more spiritual journey. And I say spiritual, you know, just my own personal spiritual, not religious or anything, you know, uh, affiliation, not that there's anything wrong with it. I took plenty of different pieces from all. My point is that I took bits and pieces from every place. <laughs> there's something to be, right? There's, there's something to be learned from everywhere. Right. And so that was, and so as opposed to being any one place specific, you're right. I just try to find the wisdom that everybody has to offer. And that kind of led me down a, a path and, and some things for me that I, the best way I could describe it is consciousness, right. And, and saying like one of the gifts that I uncovered for myself as I began to understand myself and heal myself and things was my ability to access my expanded consciousness or how, or what one might say if, 
if we think of ourselves as having a higher self or a higher consciousness, and then a little bitty of a piece of us is what incarnates to kind of learn and figure stuff out. And then we take it back up to the, you know, the, to the higher consciousness. So, so my focus in, is really in, in, in skills has been being able to decrease that filter between my, my, myself here and then myself up there. And what that's, that is unlocked for me is, is a whole different set of wisdom and understanding you know, and in some cases, abilities are not abilities like, hey, look, there's firecrackers pop out of my fingers, right? Like, that's not how the, you know, the intelligent design behind the, the system is built. But there is, you know, there are definitely different um, gifts and things that that, that, that that I've been blessed with. And I would say perspective has changed as a result of that, right? Then And how I've been able to get information that I wouldn't have been able to have known otherwise. It's been quite, it's been very fascinating, by the way, let me tell you, <laughs> to go through that. And by no means am I saying that I've got it all figured out or that everything's perfected. It's very much a work in progress that I'm, I do some of these, and in front of some of these, I put myself in some of these awkward conversations or uncom potentially uncomfortable conversations to challenge myself and to figure out what I, where I can pull the information from and how things, you know, and how I work, right? I mean, I always get the answer today. But, you know, after meditating on it, thinking about it, stuff may come to me in, in two days anyway. So that led me down the path of meeting Sunshine, who's a mutual friend of ours, who helped me to understand, you know, some of myself to put word, a lot of, she really helped me with putting words to things, understanding like a nomenclature, being able to communicate. And, um, and then that really... A lot, and then at that point, you know, I, I guess I kind of started to kind of get pushed to, all right, it's time to know go out as, as, as this um, new understanding of self, non-corporate gram, spiritual gram. And uh, that led me to a podcast, which led us united to, to talking and, ha and um, me having lots of interesting experiences and perspective changes that I never expected to occur, right? I mean, things that if you had told me two years ago, I would say, be, do, believe, I would have bet you everything I own, not a chance, no way. And I would have been so confident that I would have won that bet. And I would have been thankfully that nobody ever took me up on it because I'd have been dead broke. Right. I mean, it's literally been like a 180 in my life. And so um to an extent, this is a bit of a coming out of one side of me that I haven't been openly talked about. So thank you for allowing me to uh be part of this. I don't know, my own little coming out to my next new chapter of self party. <laughs> I love it. I love it so much. So it's also interesting that you said that you know, the first four years post leaving your corporate world, you were kind of doing a lot of stuff trying to, again, map out what your the next chapter of your life was going to look like and kind of stay up to date with the corporate world. And then after four years, you kind of realize that actually I'm being pulled in a different direction and I have a different purpose and just really leaning into the more spiritual side of your life um, and really diving deeper into consciousness. And I do want to ask you how you would define consciousness. But before I do that, I think it's interesting that you talk a lot about diving deeper into uh, the conscious mind and being able to connect on a higher level with your higher self or, you know, spirit. Um, but then you also talked about being labeled with different neurodivergent um, titles as well. So which again, ironically f feeds into this idea of consciousness or the mental, right? So just kind of want to talk about your experience navigating those labels. Um, and if that had something to do with kind of like your spiritual evolution and, and your draw towards the conscious mind. Yeah, it, it actually, it, it was extremely. So when I started my journey, right, I'm trying to figure out why was I different? I didn't talk about that earlier, right? You could, but yeah, I just, when I left, I just knew I was different. I was thought differently than people, but I didn't realize how different I was, I guess, right? And so um, in trying to understand that, I went to doctors and did traditional things. And so they, you know, they literally, and so after being labeled as um, autistic, dyslexic, math dyslexia, alexithymia, Erlen syndrome, I was like, all right, I'm cool. I'm, I'm, I'm right. Like I, I, I'm, I'm good right now. Right. And so as I started to understand these things, right. Like I then be, but then I, but the problem was as I tried to understand them, I allowed myself to become them. Right. I allowed them to kind of define me and I became them, right. Like became the set of symptoms, this nervous wreck. And then one day 
I'm like, this is crazy. And I kind of just had like a breakdown and I just was like, please help me bring some happy into the world. What in the heck is going on? Why is nothing making any sense for me anymore? And then I felt this little pop in my head. And, um, you know, from that day on, you know, I said, wait a second, this doesn't make any sense. You didn't go from being extremely competent and, and actually creating an alternative data set and creating a data intelligence methodology, right? Like, yeah, I had these different challenges, so I couldn't get, so it was, instead of learning algebra, it was just easier for me to create my own math, right? Let's, okay. And so like, I didn't all of a sudden just become inept overnight, right? And so, and so fortunately, I had a lot, I had a lot of successes in my life that I could look back on and anchor into in those like really trying dark times, of questioning myself to go, wait a second here. I didn't change who I am. Some, this isn't right. I got to get my, I got to get my act together here. Right. And so that then led me down a path of trying to understand more about myself. Cause there's no way that, it, and for, well, first of all, I felt like hey, if this is me and this is what the perception is, well, then I feel that I, I, I really got to speak up because the only, only a part of the story is being told. And that was when I understood from a neurodiverse part of things. Then I met up with sunshine and then I, and now I learned into more of this, the metaphysical world. If you're going to identify as neurodiverse or you're going to identify in the metaphysical, general, most people are going to acknowledge that they have some sort of a different wiring. Well, however it is they define, right? But they're just going to say, yeah, I'm not into the status quo. I'm not into fitting in the box, right? For whatever their own reason is, right? And so it's like I broke out of my mold and I'm building bridges to my best self. And, you know, and I can speak to the quality of my life as a result of that. And so as a if there's stuff that I can share with others, then, hey, then that's, you know, that's how I'm understanding my differences. And that's how I'm understanding the, yes, I walked in the corporate world so that I can explain how capitalism isn't bad to the spiritual and how we do, and, and how if you want to create change in the world, it's going to take some money based on the current system, right? You want to give to somebody, it takes money. So let's, so we got to figure out how to make that work together. And likewise, in the corporate world, you can't just be a parasitic relationship sucking on everything around you and the environment and the world and everything and expect that not to exist, right? So there is something to be said for this understanding the harmony in which things need to work together. And so there's a middle ground for both of those practicalities and ways of life to live together for the best of both worlds to, to exist, right? And that's really then in trying to build those that bridge together and live in that middle ground and bringing people together. That's where I've spent my time. And so focusing on consciousness, right? That how that ties in was I really then realized that one of my gifts and one of the things that also made me ch uh, uh, challenging was that I'm a very open channel to stuff around me and not knowing it <laughs> caused me a lot of problems and, you know, picking up on energies and thoughts and stuff coming out of my mouth without realizing that that wasn't necessarily me. But so that also then led me down the path of trying to understand this. How is that? Why is my head so why is my head so loud? Where do I have all these thoughts? Where's all this stuff coming from? I don't care about this stuff. So why is it in my head, right? Like this, it's like there's a lack of logic that, 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 that goes here. And so in trying to figure that out, I recognize that one of my gifts with the consciousness was being able to bring people together to create win-win solutions to, you know, make the world a better place. How do we usher in, you know, this change that's coming into the world, right? And doing my part. And so now ever since then, I've been trying to challenge myself and understanding as much as I can about how I can access my abilities and the expanded consciousness, how I can bring that, you know, the practical uses into the spiritual world versus, as well as the business. I love how you just broke everything down relating to the spiritual part of life in the more practical business type of life. Um, because I think everything in life is really and truly about balance. And I think that's what a lot of us are struggling with at the moment is finding balance between our spiritual nature and our human nature and the practical side of what it means to be a human being, what it means to live in this physical world and kind of create a level of abundance that isn't necessarily, again, feeling like you have to deprive yourself or you have to be a parasite and just take, 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 take without any sort of care for the people that you're taking from or um, potentially oppressing. So I, I love how you just broke everything down and how your journey of being given all these different labels. It's interesting that you said that once you started getting those labels, you started embodying a lot of the symptoms. And I always think to myself sometimes that you know, especially when it comes to like the medical or science world, especially when, as it relates to human beings, I think sometimes when we 
get labeled something and we feel like we have those things, we become those things, right? Or it, it becomes a lot deeper than it actually is. So it's interesting how you sort of, how you worded that and how all of that has led you to go down deeper into um, understanding consciousness and connecting with the larger consciousness, right? Because people will always say that like, we're dr all drops of consciousness getting back information mm -hmm. and taking it back to the larger consciousness. And you also talked about the shift that's happening in the world. And a lot of people say people are waking up and all that stuff. Right. So now I want to ask you about how you understand consciousness. How would you explain consciousness to someone? Consciousness to me is my ability to understand something let's say in a fixed in a fixed box or a cube there can be all kinds of things going on my level of consciousness which would i guess consciousness based on the knowledge that i've acquired how to use it and the wisdom empathy to connect to things tapping into energies all of these things determine what parts of what's occurring inside of that cube i'm able to understand and pick up on if my behind the scenes consciousness hasn't raised itself to the ability to understand something, then it's not going to pour through to me. I mean, did that make sense? Let me start there before I go up down on some. No, I understand because it's interesting. I came across something earlier today where someone said understanding is a gift or when you're communicating with someone, people really understand, underrate comprehension. And what you're saying to me is that at least what I'm understanding is that there's this large bucket of consciousness that we all have access to. Like we're conscious beings and we're tied to the larger consciousness and we're all connected to it, but we might not readily all understand the flow or streams of information that that consciousness is passing down to us, but the ones that we do understand, we're able to connect with. Correct? Is that what you were trying to say, or did I misunderstand? No, I think you actually just put a beautiful bow on this. I I think we could easily say consciousness is comprehension. Mm. That's a good one. You just gave it to me. I just made it up on the spot, <laughs> right? Because this this is the power of words, right? Words matter. Words matter, right? I because you said comprehension, I'm like, and I went ding, ding, ding. That's right. Consciousness is comprehension, right? Based on one's level of con degree of consciousness will determine what they're able to comprehend around about what's going on around them. And so every mm -hmm. time you incarnate, the goal is to increase your level of understanding and awareness, and which ultimately then raises your level of consciousness, right? Which is your level of comprehension. So every time you're coming back, you're trying to increase your count, your ability to comprehend everything that's going on around you. In the 3D world, it's, you know, it, it's all about the physicality of things. And it's about understanding what's, it's about understanding the, how to create a shape, how to create a box, right? A di people call it, you know, a dimension, width, height, depth, whatever. Yeah, that's how you create a shape. Dimensions four and above are all about understanding what happens inside of that shape. It's, it's about understanding what's happening around us. It doesn't mean that there's not other dimensions of light and different dimensions of vibration, but different dimensions of light and different dimensions are about understanding what's happening around us as well, right? Different, you know, and so that's, and so people waking up, being in tune with energies, there, there's all kinds of different ways that people will describe it, right? But that the next chapter of, you know, my understanding, the next chapter of human evolution is, is everybody understanding that it's about understanding how to use our bodies to see everything that our eyes don't. That's a good one. So, okay. So what you're just explaining, what you just explained, how I'm also interpreting it, and I think you alluded to it, is this notion of people say that, for example, you attract certain people into your life depending on the frequency that you're vibrating on, or you attract different experiences in your life because you kind of like raised your vibration and I've also heard people say that it's difficult to engage in certain conversations if you guys are not on the same mental wavelength because you might not really understand what the person is talking about and that's happened to me in my life you know where five years ago I would I the same conversation that I would listen to five years ago versus now I would understand it completely differently in fact I'd be like wait how come I did not get this before? So it kind of sounds like 
that's a lot of those things kind of go into the larger consciousness and the larger consciousness is aware of all of the different dimensions and has an understanding on all different levels and frequencies and um, is able to tune into all of them. And us as human beings having a spiritual experience, being connected to that consciousness, the higher we vibrate or the more spiritual we get, then the more we have access to deeper understandings within that larger consciousness or with beings like Jesus, for example, which we're going to talk about, um, who is connected to that higher consciousness and we're, the more we're able to tap into that. Is, is that what you're saying as well? Yeah, I'm really enjoying the way that this is the... Um... Kind of unfolding you've helped me to as well to be able to put some you know how to how to express some things and so i appreciate it yeah of course okay so we've covered the consciousness part right and the reason why i wanted to talk about that first is because i know that you had several connections with jesus um from your own interpretation right of who jesus is your own understanding of who jesus is and you know, before we started the show, you made it clear that it's not a situation where you're channeling Jesus. It's not like Jesus is speaking through you. You're more in conversation with Jesus. Can you just kind of explain that a little bit more for the people listening about what you mean that your consciousness is having a conversation or your higher self is having a conversation <laughs> with Jesus? One piece of it to think about is think about having, talking to yourself, right? Kind of how that how that kind of feels like in the brain or the mind, right? Also think about how, what it feels like when you are brushing your teeth and that random thought of that thing you forgot about all of a sudden hits you and now you got and now you remember it. So think about those types of things and that's a little bit more of the nature of the of the of the of the of the given flow of, of information. It's there's a there can be a, a delay between hey this is what I'm thinking about and this is what I'm trying to figure out and when it comes. Right? In seeking in seeking teachings and seeking guidance, right? What got me trying to reach out to him to do this was that out of anybody, he was the only figure that I came across that was written about in one capacity or another in just about every religion. Forget about what title they gave him, right? But he's like the only one in everyone's book. Something that had to be said resonated with, with a whole lot of people somewhere, somehow, in some way, right? So there's something there. And so, but then, but yet logically, for something to resonate, there's way too many contradictions in, in what's talked about out there for something to make sense, Right. And so I kind of just started trying to figure out what what what's going on out here, right? <laughs> this doesn't make any sense. Some of the stuff sounds so great, but then this is illogical. And if there is an intelligent design, then then I can't understand the the logic that's underpinning this stuff, keeping it together. First thing I would say is, I used with you. I said the person called Jesus. All right. So here, controversial point number one, right? So yeah. So Jesus was a dude, right? So this is this is to get my conversation. So yeah, Jesus was a guy. Yeah, same as anybody else in that respect where th the challenge though <laughs> in in how i came to connect with him though is that in in, in why should people struggle, struggle to understand him is because he was much more than that as are all of us and that was kind of that was the point he was trying to make so when jesus referred to himself as the son of man that's him referring to his higher consciousness everybody else said, no no son of man is referring to you know him being one of the people ah well so that's true so in one respect, son of man can represent many different avatars that give birth from the planetary consciousness. So in that respect, yes, it does also apply to Jesus because he came in call to that. However, son of man is also with an, is also with a S-U-N as a celestial being. Jesus was the universe's consciousness incarnate. In that respect, when I say, when I say that I'm talking to the consciousness, right? Think of like, I'm not, so to speak, talking to Jesus's consciousness as so much as I'm talking to the middle, the middle man of the son of man or the, or the universal consciousness. So I just want to clarify something, right? Because I think one of the points that you, you made, and I actually want to read it out because I think this is what you were, this is what you're trying to explain. So to the point that you just made and, and what I read from your conversation, the expert excerpt that you shared with me you said jesus incarnated as a regular human with divine connections to his father god right and in this in this sense somebody could say god is um the universe however you want to describe it right 
what I'm understanding from everything you just described, right, is that Jesus was basically saying, at least from your understanding, from your connection with him, Mm -hmm. is that Jesus was basically saying that he is incarnate from that collective consciousness the same way we all are. He kind of popped up as a as a channel, as literally meant to be a human form, but to be a channel for the consciousness of the universe and for the cosmos. And so, so I would actually want to correct, right? And I'll just that my understanding, and since since I wrote that a year or two ago, would be to say, instead trying to get away from this whole like concept of a god, and just think about the the creators, right? There's a lot of wordplay, and I'm sure you'll, well, you and I can talk in a different time. There's a lot of wordplay when he would refer to things as the Father. But what I was told to share was to think of it this way. The triune of creation is the Father provides the spiritual matter. The Mother provides the physical matter. The Son of Man provides the breath of life that brings the spiritual matter and the physical matter together into life. And so together, they create the universe and the life inside of the universe all is everything, right? So it's also not critical that somebody has to believe in God. That's the other important thing, right? That's the other thing I was told, right? That's because you shouldn't be doing things because you're worried about somebody being over your shoulder. That's not the whole purpose. Your whole purpose to incarnate is to create your own decision-making methodology with a conscience. And that's only going to come with you being allowed to do what you want to do, so to speak, via free will. And that also includes the, you know, repercussions that come with it and the benefits, but you got to be, be able to learn and you got to be able to do it because you do believe it's the right thing to do. Not because you're worried about, you know, some dude with a beard, you know, looking down on you. Well, a lot of people will say Jesus is an ascended master, right? So I do believe there are people who come into this world that are on a soul level, on a spirit level, there's very very high up there right so let's talk about the guy do you mind if yes. i jump in just yes so, please jump in all right good so he absolutely was innocent and that, that was the whole point right was to to come in as a average average everyday person now wired obviously with you know <laughs> great abilities because you need to leapfrog through things to be able to demonstrate what was possible though right but that was to be able to, to by walking through the shoes, he's, he was able to understand what's missing from the current teachings, what's been manipulated to put power to the hierarchy into the teacher, as opposed to the teachings and, 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 the, and the, the student learning how to customize and come into their own. And also his ability to call bullshit, part of my, right? Was just because, you know, to say, hey, look, I walked in the shoes. I went through the same teachings. I did all of the, I got to what I got to using all of the same material that's available to you guys. So don't say that it's not there. Let's talk about the sacrifices that I was willing to make. Let's talk about the choices that I made. Let's talk about the priorities. But that's the stuff, that's the tough stuff that inquires looking in the mirror. And that's the stuff that's gotten lost over time. Yes, and that's the stuff that I find very um, fascinating. And, and you wrote as well, Jesus and his incarnation are one of the most misunderstood figures in history. For example, Jesus never claimed to be God, nor did he intend or you know, create Christianity. Um, Jesus incarnated to show humanity what they are meant to become, but the church did the opposite by transforming Jesus into something unattainable. Jesus's next incarnation is to demonstrate humanity doesn't need the institution of the church or government to do what he has done. History was written by men in power that desire to justify their power over others. And I want to talk about that a little bit more. Yeah, there's a lot there. So the first, so this is where it gets important to think about him, just the human suit called Jesus as a channel and a vessel, right? To allow a voice piece for the cosmic consciousness and the universal consciousness on the physical plane. So when he would say that he was speaking for God, he was allowing himself to be a vessel and a channel for that to be spoken through. So that's where a lot of that confusion came from and why he never claimed it, but was able to do those things and and such. Okay. So the question I have is, do you think we are capable of cha- of channeling the universe the way Jesus did? Because you talked about the co- cosmic consciousness and the universal consciousness, which is 
I kind of thought they were the same thing, but it seems like you're describing them as two different things. But also people use universe, creator, or God interchangeably as well, right? This is so, the challenge is I'm, I'm stuck. I'm, I'm restricted to using the words and the definitions that exist out there. So yes, nothing is clean to your point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So yeah, give me grace or take everything I say with a grain of salt of me trying to wedge things in with what he, okay, what's fair. out there. That makes sense. So from your understanding of Jesus and in, in, in your connection with him, is Jesus kind of calling us more towards directly connecting to that higher power without an intermediary, right? Because sometimes people, for example, feel like they can only connect best with God in church. Whereas like, oh, if I were to just be in my house and try to connect to God, it might not be as potent. So I know I'm saying a lot there, but I just really want to understand when people say Jesus would not be a fan of religion today or religious dogma what does that where is that coming from it's simple they create separation not unity they judge yes. they judge they they don't give compassion yes i so, agree yeah. i agree that's something that i i've continuously struggled with um is just this big divide I mean, people are going to believe what they believe and we're all going mm. to believe different things because as human beings, we all have very specific experiences. So it makes sense that we would have different interpretations, different understandings. Even at the beginning of our conversation, we kind of talked about understanding and comprehension and people have different paths towards that, not necessarily meaning one is higher than the other, but it's just about a matter of what your soul is resonating to, right? Sure. So I've always struggled with how divisive religion makes people and how judgmental it makes people. And I'm just like, why would, and everybody thinks their religion is the best path. And I'm like, why would there only be one path? Why can't we come together? So it, yeah, so that makes sense. Thank you for kind of like spelling that out, that it, it creates division. And I think jesus would want more. not by design yeah not right by, like yeah yeah they weren't designed but that's how it's turned into and like what part about what i did led you to believe that that you should be you know punching hurting killing and putting people in jail using my name and teachings i i i that part kind of i think I'm, i skipped that 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 said session <laughs> like I have something interesting to ask you. I meant to ask you a little bit earlier, yeah. which is, so how did you know you were talking to Jesus, right? Because I hear people say like, you know, for example, using uh, Christian terminology, the Holy Spirit spoke through me, spirit is speaking through me. And then you have like channelers who are like, I'm channeling with this specific person. And, and you're talking about connecting with Jesus's consciousness, right? Or, or who... Yeah, or his higher self Jesus, consciousness. His yeah. higher self consciousness. How did you know it was Jesus's? How how what was the confirmation for you that that's who you were connecting with on a higher level? You know, it's funny. I really don't pay attention to who I. I it's funny. I didn't, and I don't. Right, I'll say, and I don't pay attention. I don't try to validate who it is that I, I that anybody that I that I do speak with, unless unless I'm like doing a, a reading or something. They ask me to to identify whatever. What I focus on is what the message is. Right. And is the message about love? Is it about looking after each other? Is it is it about compassion? Is it about learning? Right. Is it about cooperation or is it about control? Right. Is it about dogma? Is it about fear? Right. And, and so um, and then from there, I've just worked to develop and become comfortable with my own, I guess I'll call it my own internal lie detector. Right. So what feels good to me, what doesn't feel good to me? And at some point in time, right, you just got to kind of get to a spot where I guess where I kind of got to a spot where I said, who else is giving me this information? <laughs> right. That's kind of where you, that's, that's the spot where you get to. It's like, right, who else is giving me this unique perspective and different things that just sounds right, feels right, is much more of a logical flow when you think, you know, with, 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 with what you would expect based on, um, you know, the, on the teachings and things. And so. And yeah, to that point, right? Everything about was was about individual empowerment. I don't know if I fully answered that before, right? It was not about empowerment to the hierarchy. It wasn't about being submissive to the hierarchy, right? It was all about individual empowerment. And so that, and you don't, so you don't need a middleman, you know, 
between yourself and the creators was his, was his point. Now, if that's what somebody wants and that's what somebody desires, great, right? The same thing with any religion. Believe what you want to believe. What, what matters is getting to the end game. You know, you, the journey is is, is personalized. And that's, and that's just way, and that's the other part of the whole, whether it be like even new age, philosophies, religion, right? They, there's, they're, they're, they're just not enough understanding that you need to experience all of it to be able to make sense of any of it. <laughs> Thank you so much, Graham, for just agreeing to come on the show and share this part of your life with the world. And I, I do believe that the audience will find this conversation very um, eye-opening, and I think it's going to resonate with a lot of people. Before I ask where people can connect with you, I want to know if you've shifted in perspective on anything recently, and it could be as basic as maybe you discovered a new dish that you like to eat, or it could be as deep as you want it to be. Yeah, my perspectives are, are adjusting all the time. Um, you know, it's, it's, there, there's been a big one here. Um, you know, here's what here, I'm, I'm going to say this out loud because it's a, it's a perspective that I'm struggling with. And so I'm hoping by, again, by getting it out there, I finally can work past this because it is uber frustrating to me, I can't, <laughs> which is, you know, I, I, I'm much more focused on um, understanding on the, my, the, my feminine energy or my divine masculine energy as well. And one of the, and, and, as, and as I'm focused on this next chapter of my life, right, I still have gotten my old baggage and ways of, of beliefs of how the world, I think it, it is, right, that still pop up from time to time and that I don't recognize. And one of the things that keeps pulling me back is that need, is that in order for me, in order for anybody to have a need to believe in anything that I have to say or to share with any of my teachings as stuff that where I'm going to is that I have to be able to demonstrate things, demonstrate, you know, certain healing abilities beyond things that, are, you know, already and stuff like that. Um, and that's that whole, like, you know, I'll believe it when I see it kind of 3d, what I would call it that 3d mentality that I need to shake off. And so I'm really focused on changing my perspective to those that those that are meant to understand and I'm meant to connect with will will recognize that the way of the universe is wisdom. It's not just brute strength, all right? And it's not just about figuring out how to control things. And so people will recognize and appreciate the, you know, the wisdom that I have to share or the message that I've that I've been given to share at, at whatever the times are. Um, and that's enough. I don't need anything to prove I got I don't have anything to prove to anybody. Right. Just being me and just living my happy life. And just the more that I've, and just by demonstrating, the more that I've learned how to become comfortable in my own skin, you know, the better stuff is for me. And that's got, and that's, and that's just, and that's just got to be good enough. If those think I'm crazy, look, man, here's what I'll tell you I got nothing but love. If you don't like what I got to say, that's cool. Then it wasn't meant for you. And you're, and if you're happy getting your message, then go do you, yo. I don't want to change that. If you are happy with you, do you. But if you're looking for something different, hey, I'm just offering some different some different answers to some old questions. Yes. But I'm not looking to try to, to, you know, step on anyone's toes. Thank you, Graham. Thank, so you, thank so you so much. much again for having me. Yes, it was a pleasure having you on Shifting Dimensions. Where can people find you if they want to hear more of what you have to say or if they want to connect with you? Yeah, I know the best place is to find me on my Understanding the Science of You podcast. So it's Understanding the Science of You. Understanding the science of you podcast uh, dot com. No, I'm sorry, science of you podcast dot com. I'm just getting up and running. Um, is the best way if somebody's uh, you know looking to reach out to, directly to try to you know um, aside from hate mail, you know then I guess email me. I'll find out if this is a bad decision or not at Graham G R A H A M at N G E N E N G E N Solutions dot com. Thank you so much, Graham. Thank you. Have yourself a great weekend.